Welcome to this video on equipotential surfaces. This concept is a crucial part of electrostatics, which we'll explore today. Let's start by understanding what an equipotential surface is. An equipotential surface is a surface on which the electric potential is the same at every point. When a charge moves on an equipotential surface, no work is done by the electric field. Remember that electric field lines represent the path along which a positive test charge would move in an electric field. The key relationship to understand is that equipotential surfaces are always perpendicular to electric field lines. Let's visualize this with some examples. First, let's consider a positive point charge. The electric field lines radiate outward from the charge in all directions. For a point charge, the equipotential surfaces are concentric spheres centered on the charge. Notice how at every point on a particular sphere, the potential is the same. And as you can see, the electric field lines are always perpendicular to these equipotential spheres. This is a fundamental property that holds true for all electric field configurations. Next, let's look at a uniform electric field, such as the field between two parallel charged plates. In a uniform field, the electric field lines are parallel and equally spaced. Here, the equipotential surfaces are parallel planes that are perpendicular to the field lines. Every point on each of these planes has the same electric potential, Again, notice the perpendicular relationship between the field lines and the equipotential surfaces. This perpendicularity is because the electric field points in the direction of maximum decrease in potential. Now, let's understand this mathematically. The work done in moving a charge in an electric field is given by the formula W equals Q times E dot DL, where Q is the charge, E is the electric field, and DL is the displacement vector. We also know that the electric field is the negative gradient of the potential. E equals negative gradient of V. When we combine these equations, we get W equals negative Q times gradient of V dot DL for motion along an equipotential surface. The potential remains constant, so the change in potential dV is zero. This means that gradient of V dot DL equals zero. Since gradient of V is parallel to E and gradient of V dot DL equals zero, dL must be perpendicular to gradient of V and therefore perpendicular to E. This proves mathematically what we observed visually. Equipotential surfaces are always perpendicular to electric field lines. Let's summarize the key properties of equipotential surfaces. First, all points on an equipotential surface have the same electric potential. Second, no work is required to move a charge along an equipotential surface. Third, equipotential surfaces are always perpendicular to electric field lines. Fourth, equipotential surfaces can never intersect each other. And fifth, for a point charge, equipotential surfaces are concentric spheres. For a uniform field, they are parallel planes. Understanding equipotential surfaces helps us analyze and design electrical systems, from simple circuits to complex electronics. Let's look at a practical example of mapping electric fields using equipotential surfaces. Here's a setup with multiple charges, two positive charges and one negative charge. The electric field lines form complex patterns around these charges, and the equipotential surfaces form closed curves around the charges. In regions where the equipotential lines are close together, the electric field is stronger. Where they're further apart, the field is weaker. This makes sense because potential changes more rapidly in stronger field regions. So equipotential surfaces need to be closer together to represent equal steps in potential. Equipotential surfaces have many practical applications. In laboratories, we can map electric fields by measuring equipotential surfaces. In electrical shielding, Faraday cages work because their conducting surfaces are equipotential. In electronic circuit design, ground planes provide equipotential references. In lightning protection systems, lightning rods and wires create equipotential zones. When lightning strikes a rod, the equipotential surface created protects the structure below. To summarize what we've learned about equipotential surfaces, equipotential surfaces are surfaces where the electric potential is constant. They are always perpendicular to electric field lines. No work is done when moving a charge along an equipotential surface. Understanding equipotential surfaces helps us visualize electric fields and design electrical systems. This concept is fundamental in electrostatics and has numerous practical applications. Thank you for watching, and I hope you now have a clear understanding of equipotential surfaces.